Hi guys, so I got a viewer request to read Justice League of America number 4. So Justice League of America. There's only one way to free the Justice League members. Imprisoned inside that diamond. Split it in two with this diamond-tipped arrow. Here it is. The story you've been waiting for. Green Arrow joins the Justice League of America in... Doom of the Star Diamond. Justice League of America, hereby elects Green Arrow to membership for life, with all privileges and gratuities, including the wearing of the signal device and possession of the Golden Key Watch, permits entry into the secret sanctuary, its library, and souvenir rooms. It is hereby further resolved and acted upon that Green Arrow shall receive a special commendation for his expert assistance in the case we have entitled on our scrolls Doom of the Star Diamond. Welcome to the Justice League, Green Arrow! The Roll Call. Wonder Woman. Green Lantern. The Flash. John Johns, the Martian Manhunter. Batman. Aquaman. Snapper Car, Superman, and including for the first time, Green Arrow. Several trillions of miles from Earth, an alien spaceship lurks within the shelter of a black, nebulous cloud. Carthon is approaching! Ready starboard, Decento Beamers! In the next moment, the oncoming spaceship hurtles within firing range. <laughs> Inside the attacking vessel, cries of utter amazement ring out. Incredible! Carthon's ship has been disintegrated, but Carthon himself is unharmed. Fire port beamers at him! Disillusion, rays of awe, some power... Bathe the helplessly drifting spacemen. Carthon has become indestructible. Those rays will turn solid steel to powder. But they don't harm him. Get him inside here with a snatch beam. Shortly, Carthon, warlord of the space fleets of the planet Dryana, stands a prisoner of his planetary ruler. Sandor, I, I don't understand... Why try to destroy me? I've just conquered our ancient enemies. The Selisa for our people. Exactly. You become a great hero. Most people on Gyana secretly call me a dictator. Your friends, certain scientists, hope to overthrow me and establish a government of the people and want you to lead the revolt. Obviously, I cannot let you go home to Dryana. Just as obviously, I cannot destroy you. All I can do is imprison you. But before I decide where, tell me, what happened to make you indestructible? It occurred while I was on a lone scouting mission against the Silesia. While I was investigating a barren planet to use as a possibly supply base against the aliens... I was caught in an electromagnetic disturbance. I've never encountered anything like this before. Upward from the highly magnetic planet jetted spirals of raw, raw energy, trapping me between them and bathing me for an hour in unimaginable radiations. What? What's happening to me? As Carthan concludes his tale, as a result of that freak accident... An aura, invisible in normal light, has surrounded my body, protecting me from destruction. Now tell me, what do you intend doing with me? After conferring with his advisors, Xandor reaches a decision. I can't imprison you in a jail or on a planet near our home planet. For you could telepath to your scientist friends for help. I have another prison under consideration, however. 
a planet called Earth. You're a very important man, so we'll treat you well. I'm going to give you a fine spaceship, which will bring you on automatic controls to Earth. However, we are teleporting three golden box machines ahead of you, designed to keep you on Earth permanently. Should you decide to leave Earth, these machines will cause your aura to be coated with Opa Quilax, blinding you forever. Blind, you could never find your way back to Dryana, or lead a revolt against my dictatorship. Earth is a dawn atomic era planet, without space travel, so you'll get no help there. If you remove the metallic coverings of the box, machines, you will be able to escape from Earth with your eyesight intact. However, the instant you remove the coverings, you activate the machines. Once turned on, you'll be unable to turn the machines off, and they'll destroy all human life on Earth. You're a humanitarian, Carthen. You wouldn't deliberately harm the billions of people on Earth, even to save yourself. That's why I'm so confident Earth will be your home the remainder of your life. On a world too far away from Dryana, for Carthen to telepath for help, a spaceship is outfitted for his journey to Earth. There's your spaceship, Carthan. It will take you at super light speed to Earth, whether you want it to or not. After that, you will be your own jailer. You won't dare doom anyone on Earth, so you'll live out your days in exile. Through hyperdimensional gulfs, Carthan travels toward Earth at multi light speed. At least I'll be able to study the culture and social habits of Earth's inhabitants with the super instrument Xandor gave me. As his highly sensitive computers pick up reams of information, Why, this isn't as bad as I feared. Earth has a group of amazingly endowed humans, banded together and calling themselves the Justice League of America. All I need do is ask for their help. But, as a spaceship, protected from discovery by an invisibility and anti-radar beam, enters Earth's atmosphere, I can't ask the Justice League's help. Something about my ore is preventing it. I want to plead for assistance, but I'm unable to do so. Wait, perhaps all isn't lost. Suppose I were to pretend to be evil. Suppose I do activate the machines of destruction. Surely the Justice League would find a way to avert the dooms. Once that was done, I could leave Earth with a clear conscience. At this moment, in the headquarters of the Justice League of America, its members are conducting a regularly scheduled meeting, with Wonder Woman as rotating chairman. We're here to discuss the admission of new members. Do you have any suggestions? Remember, according to our constitution and bylaws, we can admit only one new member at a time. How about Adam Strange? He's achieved an excellent record. Yes, but Green Arrow has been doing fine work for a long time. How about that newcomer in Midway City? He's known as Hawkman. After an hour of friendly argument, Madam Chair Lady, I move that Green Arrow be elected unanimously. I second the motion. But before the Amazon Princess can call for a vote... All in favor of Green Arrow? Oh, pfft! What crazy, man! Speaking of arrows, where'd that come from? It appeared out of thin air. Impulsively... Batman leans forward and grasps the slender metal shaft. And as he does, so it starts to vibrate sound waves. 
Greetings, Justice League members. I have news for you. Your prospective new member, Green Arrow, is my prisoner. Who in the world? How did he learn about us and our secret meeting place? My name is Cawthon. I come from a planet many light years from Earth. To add your planet to the others I have conquered. Even as I telepath my thoughts to you, through the communicator arrow I fashioned, three engines of doom are going into operation at three distantly separated localities on Earth. Your obvious assignment is to smash them, if you can. Even at this instant, my ultra-weapons are removing the metallic coverings which will set the destructive engines in operation. As these engines begin functioning, their Alpha, Omicron, and XI rays will send a trio of disasters across the Earth. One machine is outside Keystone City, another in the Pacific Ocean, northeast of Australia, the third and last near Rome, Italy. When the vibratory voice fades away, Batman, the two of us must find this space visitor, Carthan, and free Green Arrow. Right. John Jones, I haven't been teamed with you since we battled Starro the Conqueror. Let's head for Keystone City. We'll handle the Australian sector, Aquaman. Okay, Flash. That leaves me to take care of the Roman menace. The meeting room is empty, save for the worried snapper car. As time speeds by, the honorary JLA member grows more and more restless. Until... I'm blasting off. I'm coming unglued from suspense. Maybe beaten feet will calm me down. Doom of the Star Diamond, Chapter 2 As the Amazon Princess and the Martian Manhunter hurled toward the first of the three deadly instruments of destruction placed on Earth, they discover their way to Keystone City, barred by monstrous insects. Has your Martian vision spotted the doom weapon Carthen spoke of, John Jones? Yes, Wonder Woman. It's hidden not far from here. But to reach it, we have to fight a path through those giant insects. Even as he speaks, the Martian super sleuth reels under the savage attack of a titanic wasp and a bumblebee. Bzzz. Their tremendous stingers cannot penetrate my Martian skin, but the repeated blows are dazing me. Fighting furiously, he barrels his way through the in swarming insects. Carthan's weapon must be some sort of growth-causing machine. The nearer we come to it, the larger are the insects and animals around it. Evidently, humans are not affected. Then, as leap hoppers spring forward, I could break free if only the gluey sap these leaf hoppers are exuding weren't covering my eyes and sticking my legs together. <laughs> Unable to use his jet flying power, the JLA member crashes to the ground, just as a huge firefly lands beside him. A firefly gives off cold light, but when it's this size, the usually negligible amount of heat is enough to set fire to dry leaves. <sighs> the flames are spreading, weakening me. If they aren't stopped soon, I'm done for. Far above the helpless Martian, Wonder Woman finds that she too is in dire trouble. Merciful Minerva, that huge cat thinks my robot plane is a bird and is trying to catch it. Meow, 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 meow. 
Now other cats are joining it. I've got to get out. Send my robot plane into the sky, out of danger, and continue without it. Then, as the amazing Amazon rides the wind currents, a Cooper's hawk swooping down on me. Ripped in the cruel pincers of the powerful talons, Wonder Woman struggles to free herself from the crushing pressure. This bird is a predator, preying on other living things. It's holding me too tightly for me to break loose. Then, as they pass over the fallen Martian Manhunter, the Amazon princess yanks loose her magic lasso. Minerva, guide my aim. There's just one chance for John Jones and myself. I must make a perfect toss. Straight and true flies the golden rope. It coils around the almost unconscious John Jones and lifts him upward. Wonder Woman saved me. I'm getting my super strength back. Now it's my turn to give her a helping hand. The super sleuth inhales with all his might. In the terrific downdraft, thus created the Cooper's Hawk, fluttered, flutters weakly. I didn't inhale hard enough. I'll have to try again. Once again, John Jones fills his lungs. This time the Hawk is caught by the tremendous suction and drawn so close that... <laughs> the blow made the hawk open its talons. I'm free. Carthan's engine is hidden in the dry well just below. Start down for it, Wonder Woman. As they dive for the well opening... More insects coming after us. Dive into the well. I see a big boulder that will seal us safely in the shaft. As Wonder Woman studies the strange growth machine, John Jones seals the entrance to the dry well. Why, there doesn't seem to be any way of, to shut this thing off. No button or lever of any kind. I can hear its faint humming with my Martian super ears. Only one thing to do. Smash it with our hands! <laughs> to their utter amazement, the alien engine seals its torn sides and gaping holes. It's some queer kind of self-restoring metal. What do we do now, if we can't smash it? And if there isn't any gadget to turn it off, we're beaten. Meanwhile, in his invisible spaceship, Carthan follows the activities of the JLA duo on his television screen. There's no way for me to turn off the machine, but they can do it with their superpowers. If only they'd see the clue in the well, telling them how to go about it. Frantically, Wonder Woman and John Jones examine the mystery machine, until... John Jones, look! This is the metallic cloth cover Carthan spoke about removing. Maybe if we replace it on the engine... It will help us somehow. As the cover is replaced? See here? The top of the cover indicates it should fit some part of the machine. A missing part. It must be the off-on handle we're hunting. When the cover was removed, it might have caused the handle to disappear into another dimension. Seconds later, the magic lasso is twirling so fast that it slips through the dimensional barriers and is guided by Wonder Woman's thoughts into the fourth dimension. Good girl, you've got caught it. Now give it a tug to the left. Nothing's happening. I'll try it to the right. Again and again the Amazon yanks at the invisible lever until... You did it. I can't hear the machine humming anymore. I pulled the handle down into the machine. That must have turned it off. And when the JLA duo emerges from the well? It worked all right. 
the insects are growing smaller as the effects wear off. Now that we've disposed of this menace, let's start after Carthon. I only hope the rest of the group is doing as well. Doom of the Star Diamond, Chapter 3 Racing so swiftly that his feet do not break the surface tension of the water, thus enabling him to stay above the surface in the same manner that a flat stone skips across the water, Flash hurtles toward the down-under continent, pushing Aquaman before him. It won't be long now, Aquaman. We just went past the Solomon Islands. Now we're entering the Coral Sea. Next up, Australia. As they near Australia, the land is sinking into the sea. The machine Carthen told us about must be causing it. Dive deep, Aquaman. See if you can locate the machine under the surface. The entire continent will soon be under the sea. Unless I can do something about it. Faster and faster races the Crimson Cavalier around the island continent until he becomes a mere blur. The water forms a solid wall held upright by the compressed air created by the Flash's speed. I don't know how long I can maintain this fantastic pace. It's up to Aquaman to locate the machine in a hurry. Below the cool waters of the Pacific Ocean, the ruler of the sea questions the denizens of the deep. Yes, we have seen an odd engine down on the sea bottom. But be warned, nothing alive can get near it. When Aquaman approaches the submerged metal box, he is repelled violently by the strange forces surrounding it. Oof! Whatever repelling ray this thing is, giving off as the kick of a m misery mule. Hmm. If I can't get near it, maybe Flash can. Sending out his mental calls for help, the Sea Sultan is soon surrounded with finny friends. But for Flash to examine the engine, I've got to get it up to the surface. My fish friends will help me do that. Soon... A group of octopi is busily weaving a huge seaweed basket. Keep working! Your basket must be big enough and strong enough before I can put my plan into action. At the Great Barrier Reef, shortly after, swordfish are cutting away at coral. I want a long, strong piece of coral. Since coral is composed of the skeletons of marine creatures, it can be safely thrust through the repelling ray of the Doom Machine. Now, ram the coral into the machine, tilt it on edge, and into the seaweed basket. Then, as the sharks swim upward with their basket catch, Flash will be racing around the continent so fast, he'll outrun the sound of my voice. How can I tell him we need his help, that I can't get near the machine? When the machine is set up on shore, my only hope is to hold up signs, just as they do at auto speed races, to give the drivers a message. Around and around, the continent races, the Scarlet Speedster, keeping the water from un inundating the land, until... I can't get near the machine. Need your help to turn it off. At that moment, in Carthan's spaceship, I hope Flash realizes that he has to cause counter-vibrations to neutralize the repelling vibrations of the box. If he can't, the beams will eventually pull down all the land areas of Earth to the bottom of the sea. As he hurdles around down the Down Under continent, the Flash's thoughts keep lightning speed with his flying feet. And then, I'll take out a split second for my continental runaround to work up vibrations to counter the repelling vibrations. <laughs> 
Back he super speeds around Australia, holding at bay the tons of seawater. Didn't work the first time. On the next chance, I'll try whirling my arms. Each succeeding effort by the Scarlet Speedster meets with failure. Until... You've hit it, Flash. I can get through. Just keep on spinning. Until I reach that turn-off handle. Seconds later... It's off! <sighs> Good. But until the normal balance between land and sea is restored, I better stay on the job. Shortly thereafter... Mission accomplished, Flash. Everything has been restored to normal. Now we can get after Carthan, trusting that the others have done as well, and will meet us there. Doom of the Star Diamond, Chapter 4 Those gigantic gilded statues have come alive. Since they're yellow, my power ring can't stop them. Hurtling across the waves of the Atlantic, over the mighty Alps to Italy, comes Green Lantern. Ahead of him lies the third of Carthan's mysterious doom machines. Before him are also the strange and deadly life forms the machine has created. As the Emerald Warrior swoops down out of this soft Italian sky, this is a movie set made for the science fiction picture Giants from Ganymede. Those golden giants were props used in the movie. The movie stuntmen manipulated them by wires from helicopters during the filming of the picture. But there's no need for wires now. They've come alive! Military and police forces of the Italian government have been attacking the Gilded Titans without success. My power ring is just as useless against those invaders as cannon and tanks. Some strange force from the Doom Machine has endowed them with life. Dodging the outstretched hands which seek to destroy him, the green glad gladiator beams his power ring at a nearby forest. Ordinary methods won't overcome them, so I'll try something extraordinary. Flat green buzzsaws form in the depths of the forest, and instantly begin working, sending huge showers of sawdust into the air. <laughs> Behind them, tremendous fans rotate faster and faster, sending the sawdust toward the gilded giants with the velocity of a hurricane. I've got to form a flying layer of sawdust, over the surface of the giants, then coat more and more layers over the first one. Soon, the giants from Ganymede are thickly coated with the fine particles of wood shavings. Since the first layer is in contact with the yellow surface of the creatures, my ring has no effect on it, but it will work on the other layers coating them. Under the rays of the power ring, the sawdust hardens into petrified wood, encased in thick shells of solid stone. The alien titans cannot move. Well, that takes care of that trouble. Editor's Note Petrified wood is caused by minerals replacing the woody structure of trees or sawdust with quartz. To his chagrin, Green Lantern learns his troubles are only beginning. The life force that animated the giants is working on other substances now. Those buildings starting to move. A probe beam from the power ring stabs this way, and that to locate the life source. I must find the machine creating those life rays and destroy it. Odd. My ring can't seem to make contact with it. And then, there is the answer. The life ray is hidden in a golden box. The ring emanations cannot touch it, but they're glowing to attract my attention. Green Lantern surrounds the golden box with a force field, but the yellow life rays easily penetrate it. It's no use! The rays themselves are golden, but it should be simple enough for me to turn the machine off with my hands. 
Lunging forward, he reaches for the yellow handle. But as his fingers wrap around it, oh, The lever is electrified! I, I can't move! From his power ring shoots a green beam. My feet are grounding me. If I could free them from contact with the earth, the flow of electricity won't affect me too much. The power ring shovel digs at the ground under Green Lantern's feet until he hangs suspended in the air beside the box. I'm free! <sighs> With a wrench of mighty muscles, he yanks down on the lever. I've shut it off! His mission accomplished, the JLA member heads homeward. I wonder if the others made out as well as I did. No time to find out, though. I've got to locate Carthan and his spaceship, and giving a helping hand to Superman and Batman. Doom of the Star Diamond, Chapter 5 My supervision has finally spotted the invisible spaceship in which Carthan is holding Green Arrow prisoner. Lead the way, Superman. While the other Justice League of America members have been combating the evil effects of the three deadly machines... Superman and Batman have been scorning the skies for Carthan and Skelf. The Man of Steel turns himself into a living drill as... I can't see the spaceship. All I've got to aim for is the hole Superman is drilling in its side. <sighs> Seconds later, the Justice League team races into the spaceship interior. Superman, look! Those strange beams of light surrounding someone inside them. Why, it's Green Arrow. I'll have you out of there in a jiffy. No, Batman, wait! Don't touch those lights! Those light beams are actually deadly rays. If one of them were to touch you, you would die. These rays won't bother me, Green Arrow. I'll get you out. As the Man of Steel easily passes through the death rays... Good enough, Superman. But that doesn't solve the problem of getting me out. I've already thought of that. Watch. The mighty hands of Superman run through the solid lead floor as if it were made of melting butter. This floor is of solid lead to protect you from the rays while you're in the prison. However, I can use that same lead to protect you another way. Since the rays can't get through lead, I'll make a huge egg in which to carry you. The rays won't touch you as I bring you out. Moments later... Great work, Superman. I've been mighty curious as to how Carthan captured Green Arrow. Once safely outside his prison, the Ace Archer tells a story. I was returning from a case in the Arrow car, when all of a sudden a queer light formed around me. I was lifted upward at an incredible speed by what Carthan later told me was a snatch beam. I'm paralyzed, unable to move. Then I found myself in the death ray prison with Carthan just beyond it. I hate to do this to you, Green Arrow, but it's part of my plot to stir the Justice League of America into action. While Green Arrow is concluding his story... The other Justice League members are returning from Keystone City, Australia, and Italy. My Martian X-ray vision has spotted Carthan's spaceship. I'll lead the way. But as the quintet of wonder beings hurtle into the spaceship through the hole drilled by Superman, a glowing bubble forming around us. We're caught inside it. Holding us like quicksand. As the bubble coalesces, hardens, the five Justice League members find themselves imprisoned inside a gigantic, hollow diamond. The Justice League considers me their enemy. For my own safety, I had to imprison them. Until I can explain. These are tiny flames encasing in the diamond, weakening me. And golden flakes which make my power ring useless. If only I knew where to strike the jewel 
and split it in two. The stress point can only be determined from outside the gym. At this moment, Superman, Batman, and Green Arrow dash into the room. Oh, there's kryptonite in that diamond. It's sapping all of my strength. There's the one responsible for it all. Carthan. I'll handle him. Swifter even than the lunging Batman is the flight of Green Arrow's slender shaft, which bounces harmlessly off Carthan's protective aura as... Nothing can harm me. Can't you understand? I've got to convince myself. Knocked off his feet, Carthan falls backward against the spaceship machinery. Why didn't my aura protect me? As he collapses to the floor, the spaceman touches his head. Oh, my head. It hurts. Then, that means my protective aura has suddenly faded away. Soon, Carthan is pouring out his story to an astounded Batman and Green Arrow. Now at last I can go back to my own world. But first I have to release your friends from the diamond. Oh no! When you threw me into the machinery, Batman, I wrecked it! I can't release them! Wait, there's a slim chance. Every diamond is a stress point. If I knew where this one is, I could split the diamond with one of my diamond tip arrows. Before cleaving a diamond, diamond cutters sometimes spend months studying it to discover the stress point. We don't have that much time. Luckily, I made such a study on my home planet. Aim here, Green Arrow. With sweat beating his forehead, the amazing archer draws far back on his great bow. I must hit the diamond exactly at the point indicated, with exactly the right force, or I'll doom the Justice League to a terrible fate. In the next instant, the bowstring twangs and... <laughs> Great shot, Green Arrow! You saved them! For a few moments, there is wild confusion until Batman and Superman, together with Green Arrow, convince the other members that the man they thought was an enemy is really a friend. Maybe we ought to give you a helping hand against Xandor. You've helped me plenty. Overcoming Xandor is my fight. Later, after Carthan's ship has been repaired and has departed for the stars, the Justice League members return to their secret hideout to complete some unfinished business. All in favor of Green Arrow being accepted as a new member, say aye. Aye! Hey, wait for me. I vote A2. Man, I'm a-coming unglued. Cool me in as on what's happened against Carthan. If you're saying what I think you're saying, Slapper, I want to hear their adventures too. I was in prison while they were stopping those doom machines. And so while a pop-eyed Snapper keeps the minutes of the meeting, each of the Justice League members tells his story. When we found the box had no handle. Snapper, you haven't taken down a thing we said. Get with it, man! Get with it! So he snapped his fingers. The Justice League of America, augmented by Green Arrow, takes off on another super adventure in the next issue. So, the end. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, that'd be appreciated. If you have any requests you want me to do, just let me know in the comments, and I'll tell you the date I can do the request. Um, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later.